Bromsgrove Rovers had never reached the second round of the cup or beaten a league side in this competition. But Rob Schilvok's header from Paul Webb's cross put the conference side on course to make both of those facts redundant. Northampton, next to bottom in Division 3, played like a team with the cares of league survival on their shoulders. Ricky Carter's splendid run exposed them once more, and his tremendous finish to make it 2-0 was fitting reward for Bromsgrove's superiority. Northampton's last-minute goal, courtesy of Martin Aldridge, was of little consolation for them. Bromsgrove in round two for the first time, but not so manager Bobby Hope, who was a cup winner with West Brom in 68. Well, I think it's a different feeling altogether. I mean, it was great to win the cup. I mean, that was the uh, highlight of my career. But uh, saying that, it's the first time we've been in the second round proper at Bromsgrove. So it's a great occasion for the club and obviously for a manager as well. Looking to that cup draw, obviously now aspirations of perhaps making it to round three. Yes, definitely. I mean, we'd like uh, I'd like uh, West Brom away. You know, that's uh, from a financial point of view and obviously from being there a long time, it'd be a great draw for us. Traditions, but today they were undone within the first seven minutes by a fellow conference side. Paul Webb's tremendous fourth minute strike giving Rovers the lead. Yeovil still on the back foot when Colin Radburn went through the defence to make it 2 0, claim a second league scalp, and put Rovers in the job. Here we go. Two lovely port for the five of Fried Stakes. And everyone who knew about it was pleased with the team's success. They played well, they done well, they played away from home, done marvellous. It was just the result we wanted. Getting through into the third round, is it? Rovers were ahead within four minutes through fullback Paul Webb, who powered home this 20 yarder. Well, it's what people need in Bromsgrove, cheer them up before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. it's a good thing. Yeah. It's great. Rovers' second came after seven minutes. Colin Radburn, the scorer. Oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic for the area, fantastic for Bromsgrove, and fantastic for me because I'm opening new business in Bromsgrove. <laughs> The man who's managed Rovers for most of the past decade was in pleasantly reflective mood about the two early goals. Which is very unusual for us, because we're usually very slow starters. But uh, Saturday, everybody was geared for it. And as soon as the referee blew the whistle, we went straight at them, took the game to them, which was the, the plan we, we talked about before. But you know what it's like with footballers, you make plans and <laughs> other teams seem to spoil them. Now, Rovers look forward to January the 8th, when they hope to put a late present on their Christmas tree. We're drawn by Mr Gordon McKee, the chairman of the Challenge Cup committee, and the away teams by Sir Bert Milliger. Number 38, Swindon Town. Number 14, we'll play Ipswich Town. Number 28, Oxford United. Number 40, we'll play Tranmere Rovers. Number 47, Preston North End. Number 63, we'll play AFC Bournemouth or Nuneaton Borough. Number 18, Luton Town. Number 35, we'll play Southend United. Number 50, Stockport County. Number 31, we'll play Queen's Park Rangers. Number 42, West Ham United. Number 41, We'll play Watford. Number 55, Cardiff City. Number 21, we'll play Middlesbrough. Number 64, Wickham Wanderers. <coughs> Number 24, we'll play Norwich City. Number 62, Bromsgrove Rovers. Number 3, we'll play Barnsley. Number 44, 
That's Wolverhampton one. To the four non-league survivors, was it only one of them? Bromsgrove Rovers given a home draw. The Vauxhall Conference side entertain Ar uh, Arsenal Barnsley, managed by Viv Anderson. Uh, and Barnsley at the wrong end of Division 1 right now. Gerald Sinstat reporting this time. At Wembley last May, Viv Anderson led Sheffield Wednesday out for a cup final that was to end in frustration. A one-all draw and a replay he missed because of injury. 25 years earlier, West Bromwich Albion's ball carrier, Bobby Hope, carried off a winner's medal for beating Everton. Now they're opposing managers in the third round. Hope yeah. with Bromsgrove Rovers of the Vauxhall Conference. Conditions at Stafford Rangers on Monday didn't give Hope's side much chance to show the style that has just won him a Manager of the Month award and made them the last team left in the FA Cup to have played through all qualifying rounds. We started off quite sticky. We played Grizzly the Rovers in the first game. In fact, the only game we've been drawn at home, apart from the Saturday's game. And uh, we drew with them and won away, and we've won away ever since. You know, and that, uh, the last game was Yeovil, which was a hard game for us. But uh, we've come through them well and uh, probably played better away from home than we have at home. When I was at Forest, we, we got so close. I think we got the semi-final once and uh, quarter-finals a couple of times, but never really got to the final. So at my twilight years, gets to the final with Sheffield Wednesday and loses. So it's, it's a big thing. It goes all over the world and it's a, a very good competition to win. Do you look on it differently now as a manager? Yes, uh, now being the manager of Barnsley Football Club, we, it's, um, it's, the FA Cup is a good money spinner for us if we can get in, in the latest stages of the competition. So every round we get through, the better it is for the football club financially. Finance, of course, matters to Bromsgrove too. But this is the round of romance for players who dream of a fantasy fulfilled while earning their living elsewhere. Bromsgrove's Paul Webb has reached the first round five times in seven years, but until now, hadn't been further. And success has not come easily. Most days I'm up at five, out on the road by 5.30. Um, some days, five o'clock finish, so it's quite a long day. And training on top of that? Yes, and then uh, after training uh, for seven o'clock, uh, two nights a week. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll fit it in there. Then there'll be Barnsley players who will have had a couple of hours training in the morning, afternoon off to rest. Hardly a level playing field for a cup tie, is it? No, that's true, uh, but uh, the FA Cup's a one-off, so we'll just give it uh, everything we've got, really, and uh, at the end of the day, hopefully, to be good enough. Webb's goal against Yeovil helped Bromsgrove into the third round for the first time. They'd already knocked out Northampton, but First Division Barnsley will be a stiffer challenge. The biggest thing I tell my players is, is to go and enjoy it and do themselves justice, uh, and not freeze you know, from the last few games, we haven't frozen because we, we had a big crowd at Yeovil. I know we're playing against the league club, which makes a big difference. But we had about 7,000 at Yeovil, which is a big crowd for, obviously, some of our players who have never played at that level before. And if they go and enjoy themselves and do themselves justice and do their best, and if we lose, well, as long as they do their best, then you can't say anything about that. Viv Anderson's injury-shortened cup final was his last game for Sheffield Wednesday. Now he has a new challenge, not only as a manager, but having to overcome this opposition. I, I personally haven't played against a non-league side in really? the FA not Cup. Ever. No, no. So um, I'm going to. It is all new ground. It then. is all new ground. Yes, definitely. Um, I would treat it the same way I would play, be playing Manchester United. You've got to treat it like that. You've got to give them the utmost respect because you know, if you go to these sort of places and think, well, we're the league side, they're the non-league side, it should be an easy game for us. We stroll about, you get a rude awakening very early on, I think. So I think we've got to treat it as if it's, we were playing Manchester United and we're going to treat it that way as well. Absolutely right, and I bet Viv and his players were looking very hard at that Bromsgrove pitch there. Well, that's what happens. In about half an hour's time, there'll be players up and down the country arriving at away grounds and they'll go out and test the pitch and they'll be thinking, oh, don't fancy that much. I've done that many times myself. And all it needs is three or four think along those lines and you're in big trouble before you start. Mm. Does that mean you're going possibly for Bromley? No, I'm going for Barnsley. <laughs> I've met First Division Barnsley and giant killing was in every reporter's notebook. Mark Chris put the non-league club ahead after 33 minutes. Bromsgrove still led two minutes from time. Maybe they were wondering what colour the club suits were going to be for round four when Andy Rammel made it one all. Oh well, a replay in Yorkshire would bring in much needed revenue. Bromsgrove would have been thankful for that small mercy when Owen Archdeacon blew them away with a last minute winner. I thought we were the luckiest team in the world today, said Barnsley manager Viv Anderson afterwards.